Hi, I'm Wayne Jones. Welcome to Writing and Editing. This is episode 146, the basics you should see in any contract you sign with an editor. Uh, what I'm talking about here mostly is uh, a freelance editor, someone like me. Uh, and usually, you know, we'll just sort of take as a typical example here where uh, a person has written a book, either fiction or nonfiction, and they've, uh, they're about to contract with an editor to edit it for them. And um, I just wanted to go through for those of the uh, listeners who are, I suppose, mostly writers, uh, the things you should expect in a contract uh, that you that you sign. And uh, I guess the first thing to mention is that uh, a professional editor generally will have you sign a contract of some time and uh, of some kind. And you really shouldn't be daunted by this because it really uh, two things. One is that it's really meant to protect, if I can use that word, both of you, is meant, to, is meant to set out very clearly what's to be expected on both sides, what the uh, writer will get and what the editor will do, to put it in simple terms. And the other thing, too, is that um, y- usually the contract shouldn't be too complicated. Uh, the one that I have that I use with my clients, for example, is two and a half pages long and extremely plain English. And uh, some of them are longer. I'm not saying that they need to be uh, micro or anything like that, but it shouldn't be in legalese. Uh, You should be able to read it and understand what's being said. And uh, it's very important. So uh, frankly, if I were a writer, I wouldn't I would encourage you to get some sort of contract with the with the editor, and it would be very unusual, I think, if you didn't, if they didn't, uh, frankly, demand that anyway and offer that as a normal way of doing business. So I just wanted to go through some of the sections. I'm using my own uh, contract template as an example, and other editors will have will not have some of the things that I have here and other editors will have other things that I uh, don't have here. Uh, But uh, these are the basics that I think are important. I always have a section called effective dates. And that basically says, uh, you know, uh, my, my work will start now. The editor's work will start now and the editor's work will end whatever time from now and that whatever time from now is the deadline for the editor that's when the editor either on that day or before that day should deliver the edited work to you uh so that's that's a that's a basic because if you don't have anything like that of course the editor could go on vacation for three weeks and you have three weeks where no work is getting done and suddenly it's eight weeks and your book is still not delivered back to you edited. So that's a, that's a very important basic in any contract. The other obvious basic is the work to be performed. This is basically what is the editor going to do for you uh, with this book that you've sent? And it's because there, there can be a very, a, a, a real variety of things that an editor can do. Some editors, for example, will just, you know, the, the, the contract may be either by the choice of the writer or uh, this is what the editor does, that it's simply what editors call copy editing, which is basically looking at the mechanics of punctuation and uh, spelling and things like that. And that maybe you could see cases like that and maybe uh, that's all, the, uh, all that the, uh, the writer wants. Uh, but generally speaking, and uh, frankly, the way I always operate is that I I always do, I always think of there being three kinds of editing that can be done to any piece. One is what's called copy editing. And that's, as I said, that's dealing with the uh, the typos and the punctuation and, and things like that. Another one is what is often called stylistic editing or line editing. Uh, and that has to do more, that's sort of, uh, in a way, coming back a layer. So it has more to do with things like um, uh, style of your sentences, composition, uh, uh, clarity of what you're writing, that kind of thing. So it's not about, oh, you spelled this word wrong. It's about um, 
you know, the sentence, kind of the structure of this sentence, or even the the, the paragraph, uh, it should be changed in this way. And the other the editor may not make that recommendation. That may be part of the the work they're doing. The 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 most common way that editors work, I think that this is fair to say these days, is that you work using Microsoft Word, and you you turn on the track changes feature there, so that the writer in the end, the client, can see every single change that you make, uh, and and that's very important. Even though I have to say. Uh, I don't want to get up off on a side uh, rant about Microsoft Word, but often the way it's presented could be better, I think. I think with a better use of color, because often it turns into a bloody mess that the, the writer is, would be looking at and it would be hard to hard to see. So anyway, but the other option that the writer has, uh, that the editor has, and I, I take advantage of this a lot, is to put marginal comments in there. So you can highlight something, especially in a case where it's not a simple or obvious change and say something like, uh, not quite sure what you mean here. Did you mean that X or did you mean Y? And often too, that's something that you should expect from the, the work of an editor. It's, it's often not enough to for the editor simply to say to you, I don't know what you mean here. but. Sometimes it'll be that something is ambiguous. That's that's a very common thing. And so the editor, uh, I, I think, would have a marginal note that says more like, did you mean XXX or did you mean YYY kind of thing? And then the the um, the, the the client, the writer, would have the chance to be able to, to answer back there. So those are two kinds of editing, copy editing, stylistic editing. The other is often what's called structural editing. And as the name implies, that has to do with standing way, standing way back and giving advice to the writer on the, the whole structure about moving paragraphs around, about uh, moving chapters around. Um, uh, so it's, it's much more a very, very macro look. There's often a lot of editing where that's not called for and the writer will not ask for that, nor will the uh, editor do that routinely. But I think it's fairly routine for the first two, copy editing and stylistic editing, to be combined. I, I think of those as basically just saying, uh, we're fine with the structure, it's got 20 chapters, uh, but just make the writing better or make suggestions about how, how I can make the writing better. And the other thing, a lot of people don't consider this to be a part of editing. I do. It seems obvious that it is. But it, there, there's a there's another duty called proofreading. This is very different. This is, has to do with when you're publishing your book and however you do that, whether you go through a traditional publisher, whether you go through you know a hybrid publisher, there are publishers now who... Uh, are somewhere between a traditional publisher and self-publishing, or whether you go through self-publishing to publish your book, you at some point, you definitely have to produce what are called proofs. And what proofs are is basically the, uh, the book laid out, typeset basically, laid out as it will look when it gets published. And a proofreader is someone who's, uh, who should look at that uh, and... Uh, it's often very, very picky work because if it's gone through a series of editing already, the you know one of the three or all of the three editings that I mentioned uh, at proofreading, uh, there should you should be dealing with uh, really small things. Some of them caused by the software. Some of them things that just got missed or whatever. Uh, but proofreading is very, very important uh, part of part of editing, and often that won't be part of uh, like a typical book that gets sent to an editor because uh, the first step will be, I would like to get it edited. And then what the writer will do with that would be to take it back and either accept changes that the editor has, has done or add some pieces. Or if the editor has made suggestions about structure, the writer will consider that. So there may be proofreading to come, but it's, it's, far, it's further down the road. And the other thing, and I just I just started putting this in my contracts uh, based on uh, I'm actually working with an editor now who's editing my I, I'm I'm 
I'm nearly finished a book. And of course, I want a professional editor just because I'm an editor doesn't mean that, uh, you know, I want another person to be to look at it. And the uh, I'll just say that an editor with the initials uh, JD, I saw this in, in her contract, and I've now put this in mine. And that's basically, here's the wording, here's the exact wording that I have. Note that while the editor will make every effort to correct errors and provide comprehensive advice and recommendation, recommendations, it is not possible to guarantee perfect error-free work. And I see that as there not so much as sort of a pr protecting the editor, you know, so that someone can say, oh, on page 137, you missed this typo or something, but really to s state the fact about editing that uh, you know, if you're looking, if an editor in practical terms is looking at, say, a normal novel of 60,000 words, you know, it's very hard to make that perfect. Uh, it's very difficult to be super consistent all the way through. As a human, you're going to miss a few things, probably. I've heard, this is anecdotal, but I've heard stats like uh, people saying like a 5% error rate is is perfectly acceptable. Uh, I'm not sure about that number, but you you hear things like that. Uh, the main point being that editors do make mistakes or miss things, and it's good to indicate that, I think, in a contract. Uh, so this is from the editor's side. Don't be surprised if you're a writer, if you see that. It doesn't mean that it shouldn't mean that someone is just going to do a kind of a slapdash job and, and hack something together for you, but it's basically just acknowledging the reality of the fact that it's impossible uh, to be perfect. There should also be in the contract that you have from the editor a, a clause about confidential, confidentiality and non-disclosure. So basically that means that if, if, uh, if an editor is working on your, on your book and editing it, that doesn't give them the liberty to you know, mention your name to at parties or talk to their sister about the fact that I'm editing this book or say that, you know, there's terrible writing in this book I'm editing. Not at all. You should, uh, uh, I've been asked, for example, you know, well, what's the book about and that sort of thing. I, I don't, I say, I really can't say I'm bound by confidentiality not to talk about that. And I take that very, very seriously. And editors should, a good editor should. And the fact that you know that uh, they will is because there's a clause in there that says that. Um, uh, you know, maybe the most I would say is that I'm editing a novel right now. And, you know, definitely not mentioning any names. Um, the fee. Uh, obviously, this is one of those obvious things that needs to go in there, like the deadline and like what is the editor going to be doing. Uh, this should be stated very clearly. Uh, specify your dollars, uh, at least if it's in dollars, Canadian dollars and U.S. dollars. Believe me, as a Canadian, there's a big, big difference in, in the two. Uh, and also what I do routinely is that um, I do put in a kind of a sentence there that says, if I don't make the deadline, I will uh, uh, decrease the fee by a certain amount, by a certain percentage. And what I do is 3%. So that, for example, for every day that I miss the deadline, and I usually don't miss the deadline, but this is just to offer reassurance to the, um, to the writer, uh, I will deduct $3,000 from the fee. So, for example, if the fee is $1,500 to finish on March first and I finish on March 3rd, which is two days uh, late, uh, then I would deduct uh, a 3% twice from 1500, which is uh, $90. So th the idea there is that if you're going to, if an editor is going to commit to deliver on a certain deadline, that's not just a around that time kind of thing. Uh, that's a deadline, that's a commitment, and there may be various reasons for which the uh, writer is depending on that time for whatever reason. Maybe they're headed off to, you know, on a vacation or something like that, and they want to be able to take the novel with them and work on the editor's comments during it. Uh, so you, sh you, should take that, you should take that very, very uh, seriously, and that's the way I indicate that. You can't just sort of... Uh, 
you know, it, it's very unprofessional for one thing, but also very unfair to the client who's paying a lot of money for your for your for your work to just blithely say, oh, well, it's going to be a couple of days late. That's not, that that I consider that not to be on at all. That's very unfair. Um, there should be a termination clause in the in the contract. And generally speaking, this is sort of like one of those things where generally speaking, it's not going to happen. I've had edited hundreds of things and I've never had it terminated, but you need to specify what happens if either the client or the editor decides that, uh, no, I want this contract to end. So you need to specify, you know, with three days notice or a number of days notice, what's going to happen. And uh, if the client uh uh, uh, terminates the contract. Uh, you know, generally speaking, the editor would uh, ask, or this would be part of the contract, that a some kind of prorated uh, amount be paid to them uh, because they would have been working on it, and it'd be if it's terminated two thirds of the way through. And same same way, the other way, if the if it's terminated by the editor, um, you know, it it could be that. Uh, you know, no fee is payable at all. Uh, but generally speaking, this shouldn't happen a lot. An editor should be, but, you know, life happens basically, but an editor should know that they have the time to do it. And generally speaking, a client will uh, will know that they want this finished as well. There should be an applicable law clause in the contract. And that basically states uh, that uh, it's governed and interpreted the, the contract according to the laws of whatever province you're in in Canada or whatever state you're in in the United States, or I'm not sure about other countries, but in, in Canada and the United States, it basically specifies either the province or the state, or I guess in Canada, the territory as well. And then it should be signed and dated uh, by, uh, by the client and the editor. And this is important as well. You can't just leave blank lines at the bottom. Uh, it needs to be actually signed. So those those are important. And I just wanted to end off by talking about a little bit about the process of the editing. Uh, the, the deliverables, if I can use that very workplacey term, uh, that is that the author gets back should not only be the edited text, but the author should also get what editors generally refer to as a style sheet. And I think of it as a, a consistency sheet, basically. And this is usually, it, it can be a couple of pages long, two, three, four, five pages long even. And this is what an editor uses as they go along in the editing for their own purposes, but it turns out to be very useful for the writer as well is a way to stay consistent. For example, just to pick a, 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 a single example about numbers, you know, uh, are you going to spell out your numbers or are you going to use numerals? And a tip, you know, a common way to do it is that uh, all numbers from one to nine are spelled out, O-N-E, T-W-O, that sort of thing. But anything from 10 upwards is used as a numeral, one zero, one one. One two, and that multiply that by a hundred, and those are the kinds of details that are that are there. And often it ends with a uh, a list of spellings, because even though this sheet, this style sheet, also specifies a dictionary, there will be cases where that word is not in that dictionary, or there will be cases where the uh, the author, for whatever reason wants the word spelled differently than it is in the dictionary. Uh, and that's perfectly fine. Every, the important thing here is all about consistency. So, uh, so that's what one deliverable you should get. And the other thing you should get is what editors sometimes refer to as an editorial note or an editorial letter. And this I consider basically just a cover page. Uh, and I don't mean just a cover page, it's a cover page where the, the editor will talk about uh, the strengths of your work and the overall uh, problems and issues they identified in a very, very general way. So instead of the writer only finding this out by the fact that a certain thing 
occurs all the time through their 60,000 words, the editor will, uh, you know, usually is taking notes about this as they go. And they will mention this in the editorial note that they send to you in, in the cover letter that they send. Another thing, and this will often be talked about, and this could be something that you put in the contract itself, is communication. Uh, some, some writers, I've certainly worked with clients who I sign a contract with, and then I send the book back to them on their deadline, and that, that's the way they wanted it. Uh, but there are other uh, clients who uh, like a weekly update. You know, how are things going? How's it looking so far? Uh, what kinds of issues are you noticing? And it can be important either to formally, and I think formally is best, i.e. written down, uh, uh, indicate uh, uh, how you'll do that. So, you know, every week I'll send you an email update on how things are going. Uh, and uh, it's, a, it's a good, it can be a good opportunity because uh, editing is great because as you get deeper and deeper into the book, you'll notice you know, if you read the first three pages, it's hard to sort of tell, okay, this is going to be this. These are going to be the problems. But as you get deeper and deeper, you you start to realize, I see this is this often this huge structural issue is is a problem. And this is going to need to be mentioned uh, either in the in the weekly update and certainly in the editorial note that you see. And just finally, to end off, I wanted to say that the other thing, and again, this can be put into the contract, uh, and I often do, after the process is over, you know, you've gone through all that, the weekly updates, you've gotten the all those deliverables that I mentioned. After the process, then the, the writer has all these things. The editor should, the editor, at least put it this way, the editor often makes themselves available for any questions or clarification, because it may be that uh, you know a writer just needs a has a follow up question, and I, I routinely do that. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, it doesn't matter if it's three weeks later or a month later, two months later, whatever it might be. Uh, but often, it's good if, if uh, perhaps for it, it's best for both the writer and the editor that you uh, that you specify. You know that you make sure that. Uh, each knows that, uh, well, I'll be available for a month or I'll be available for three months afterwards to answer any questions that you might have. And that's uh, how I see uh, if you're looking to, if you have something that you've written of any length uh, and you're going to work with an editor, you're going to hire an editor and pay that person money, uh, you should sign a contract. And these things that I've just mentioned are the main things uh, that you should see in that contract. I hope this has been helpful. And that's all for this episode. Thanks for listening. Check out the show's website at writingediting.ca to find all past episodes, how to subscribe or contact me, and how to rate or review the podcast. I'll be back on Thursday. Please join me.